Here are the three big takeaways from the Supreme Court decision on Obamacare. Folks such as Washington Post columnist George Will are working to say that the real silver lining is the clear language the court used in limiting Congress's use of the Commerce Clause. As Will wrote, Roberts got the court to embrace emphatic language rejecting the Commerce Clause rationale for penalizing the inactivity of not buying insurance. Now, Will could be right that the decision may spark a backlash in favor of smaller government, or at least one that calls a tax a tax and not a mandate. But anybody who thinks the government at any level will feel even the slightest bit limited by this ruling is flat out wrong. Let's leave aside the large and unchanged fact that Obamacare remains unpopular. Most recent polls show majorities of Americans opposed to it, and that number rises among those who say they are well informed. Obamacare is essentially Romneycare on steroids. So having the architect of the latter blasting the former for doing what Romney crowed about doing in the Bay State is a tad confusing. And it doesn't help that Romney is vowing to repeal and replace Obamacare immediately upon taking office. The repeal part is self-explanatory, if not fully convincing, but what's he going to replace it with? And if it's not a real market-driven plan that dismantles not only Obamacare but Medicare, why am I listening? One of the major selling points of the new law was that it would bend the cost curve down. Do Obamacare supporters seriously think that increasing government involvement in health care is going to keep costs low? Medicare, a single-payer system run by the federal government, is the single biggest factor in rising entitlement costs. Medicaid is a classic case of paying more for less. That is, costs keep going up, while outcomes are truly dismal for the poor folks trapped in the system. A recent analysis by the firm Bradley Woods projects that insurance premiums will rise by about 7.5% annually under the law. That's not only way above inflation, it's much higher than health care costs were rising before the government created Obamacare. For Reason TV, I'm Nick Gillespie.